API standard 610 centrifugal pumps. Some of the questions are easy as uh, what is the standard for centrifugal pumps? And one of the answer is API 610, so you just click it. Now the name centrifugal pumps as the, it suggests, so it's turning around in a circle uh, the liquid and giving it some momentum and thereby increasing the pressure for the head. In this model, you shall learn about the inspection aspects of API 610 as the main standard for centrifugal pumps. Remember that you only need to look at the inspection parts uh, and the relevant uh, other sections, so uh, from inspection point of view. A material of construction for pump is specified in the pump data sheet. So always remember material of construction is in the data sheet. There's a lot of information in pump data sheet, inlet pressure, outlet pressure, uh, any specific inspection requirements. Rated flow shall be between 80% to 110% of best efficiency flow rate of the pump. So there is a range normally that the uh, pump works to, and that's uh, in the region of 80% to 110%. Now, what is uh, best efficiency point of the pump? Uh, best efficiency point of the pump shall meet the performance requirement and should preferably be between the rated point and the normal point. Uh, when the discharge valve of the pump is closed, the efficiency of pump is zero at this point because there is no flow. However, as you open the discharge valve, the efficiency of the pump increases since the flow rate increases until the valve is fully open and the pressure starts increasing. There is a point when the valve is fully open and the turbulence starts in the flow that can cause vibration, instability and chatter. Continuous instability can affect the integrity of the pump in the long term. The point just before the turbulence starts and uh, uh, starts affecting the pump is usually called the best efficiency point. So as you can see here, uh, this uh, line horizontal is uh, flow and the vertical line sh uh, shows the head or the pressure. So there is a green zone where that is a preferred one because uh, below that uh, you would have cavitation and uh, surge and above this uh, range you have chatter and vibration and resonance. So this is the best efficiency normally when the under the range that it works to. The tensile stress used in the design of pressure ca casing for any material shall not exceed a quarter times of the uh, ultimate tensile strength or uh, two-thirds of the yield strength of that material, which is whichever is lower. So this is sort of a safety factor. We normally have three and a half to four times safety factor here for all the materials. So uh, you normally also, if you go to ASTM uh, section two materials, there is also allowable stress uh, and all the construction codes as my section eight, uh, there is allowable stress, which is more or less like a quarter times of the minimum ultimate tensile strength of the material. Now, most of the pumps, uh, the casing are casted. They don't, uh, they manufactured by casting uh, because casting is easy. You can make it any shape you want. And there's no wastage of material compared to uh, machining and it's one piece. That's very important, especially when the pump is under uh, fatigue load and vibration constantly. So uh, there is uh, like a joint efficiency for wells, the casting also have a, a casting factor for casting efficiency called EC. Um, so if you do just a visual or a, either a visual or a magnetic or liquid penetrant, you get a, a point uh, eight casting factor, the efficiency, uh, casting efficiency of the, uh, which is used for determining the minimum thickness, uh, considering the pressure. 
if you do a smooth radiography, you get 0.9 as well as ultrasonic. And if you do a full radiography, um, it's one. So full radiography one means it's uh, uh, the full uh, casting factor can be utilized like uh, uh, because you have you are certain that there is no defect present. So it's mostly depends on the actually the uh, level of uh, certainty. For example, when you do a spot radiography, you don't find any defect, you are not 100% sure. But when you do full radiography, you're 100%, you're 100% sure. So the casting factor increases, so you can also decrease the uh, design thickness based on the pressure. <laughs> the use of uh, chaplets in the pressure casting shall be held to a minimum. Uh, the chaplets are used to keep the mold in place and they, uh, once you pour the casting, it also melts it's from the same material, but you should keep it to a minimum because uh, if the chaplet doesn't fully um, melt during the casting process, it can uh, uh, cause a problem with the casting defector, obviously, and uh, it turns to lamination and porosity and all sorts of defects. Chaplets shall be clean and corrosion free. Plating is permitted and our composition compatible with the casting. Uh, chaplets shall not be used in impeller castings uh, because impeller they are running and uh, it's too risky to use that. The maximum allowable working pressure should be at least the maximum discharge pressure plus 10% of the maximum differential pressure. Uh, this 10% uh, differential pressure margin is intended to accommodate head increases, either uh, a higher speed in variable speed, uh, pumps and head tolerance or testing tolerance. Uh, what is the differential pressure? Pump develops differential head or differential pressure. Differential pressure means the pump takes suction pressure, adds more pressure, the working pressure and generates dis discharge pressure. So discharge pressure is uh, equal to the pump suction pressure plus the pump's working pressure. As you see, we put a, 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 this figure in the pump here. Uh, so this is a level of the inlet, uh, the uh, head of the uh, inlet, as you can see, and this is the outlet. So the liquid comes through the pump, it gets a uh, head increase, uh, uh, pressurized or head increase, and then it goes at this level is discharged. So if you consider that there are two tanks here at the inlet and outlet, the, uh, so this would be the suction side elevation, and this would be from the ground, and this would be the elevation for the discharge side, as you can see. So the difference between this and this height would be the discharge head or discharge pressure. Impellers shall be a single piece castings, forgings or fabrications, Impellers should, shall be keyed to the shaft. Pinning of impellers to the shaft is not acceptable because if you pin it, if the pin breaks, the whole thing collapses. So it should be one piece and keyed to the shaft. Uh, pinning is just a, a little bit of a pin and uh, keyed is actually a lot more reliable than <coughs> pin. Uh, if chlorides are present in the pumped liquid in a concentration of 10 mg per kilogram, 10 ppm, it's necessary to use caution when applying stainless steel. So normally, if you remember, most of the hydro test pressure done uh, with the water uh, chloride content of less than 50 ppm. So if you're using a stainless steel pump and uh, chloride is present, uh, to be safe, it should be less than 10 ppm. If coating are applied to the rotating component, the acceptance balance should uh, shall be performed after coating has been applied. Because um, uh, if you do after coating, then it could, could mask the leak or anything. So always on any static or rotating equipment, apply the coating after the pressure test of the casing or pressurized part. Rotating parts shall be uh, should be balanced before the coating in order to minimize balance co uh, corrections to the coated areas, because coating can also increase uh, like it has uh, some thickness. So eventually, it's a rotating part, 
it can uh, uh, unbalance the impeller so it's always better to balance the impeller first and then the apply coating and that imbalance is very res residual uh, uh, very uh, negligible um, so uh, then you can sort of do a fine tuning and totally balance the impeller purchaser shall uh, specify the minimum design metal temperature to which the pump will be subjected in service so this is purchaser's responsibility this temperature shall be used to establish the impact test requirements normally this is the lower of minimum surrounding ambient temperature or minimum liquid pumping temperature so this goes without saying uh, based on the ambient temperature the lowest mean in the uh, last 10 years then you add 8 degrees centigrade to it that would be mean design metal temperature or the liquid temperature uh, all pressure retaining seals steels applied at the specified design metal temperature below minus 30 degree centigrade or 20 degree fahrenheit shall have a sharpie v notch impact test of the base metal and the belt joint so anything minus 30 degree centigrade 20 degree fahrenheit do need a sharpie v notch impact test for toughness purchaser shall specify the extent of his participation in the inspection and testing that is done by uh, annotating or putting his intervention points in the inspection and test plan, uh, what he wants to see or witness, send his inspector. If shop inspection and testing has been specified, the purchaser and the vendor shall coordinate manufacturing hold points and inspector's visits. This can be done through annotating pur uh, purchaser's intervention points within the ITP submitted by the supplier. The expected Dates of testing shall be communicated at least 30 days in advance and the actual dates confirmed as agreed. So there would be a preliminary fabrication schedule telling when the test is done and as you close down to closing to the uh, due date or plan date, then the final test is confirmed. Normally uh, uh, the API says five working days. Uh, advanced notification for a witness or observed inspection test point. Uh, some projects they say 10, but uh, API says 5 working days. Now, uh, remember that API doesn't use a hold point terms here, and with, they use witness or observe. But witness actually means hold point, and observe means uh, witness point in the uh, many projects. Um, but API use witness point and observe inspection point. So practically all witness inspection test points are hold points. Yeah, what they mean. The name plate uh, shall be stamped with the following information in units consistent with the data sheet. So if they are using US units, the data sheet that is filled in normally uh, by the client uh, package engineer, and it will fill in the material needed, the uh, input, the output, the inlet, the outlet, uh, pressure, and temperature, and uh, the flow and the head that's required. And then uh, the vendor fill the rest of it. Uh, eventually, uh, if it's in US units, then they say, if it's a ISO units, then it should be the same unit on the, normally on the nameplate. So purchase order number, for traceability, vendor size and type of model number, it might be off the shelf pump. So pump serial number for traceability again for vendors internal system, rated flow or capacity, rated head, uh, casing hydro hydrostatic test pressure, the speed, RPM, manufacturer's identification number, maximum allowable working pressure and temperature. This is one by one pump manufacturer. So as you can see, the hydro test. Um, and here is the service is reformate splitter reflux. And, uh, manufacturing country, uh, year manufacturer, serial number. What type is it? What size is a three inch pump? Uh, customer item number for their traceability, their maintenance system. What's the capacity? gallon per minute 307 what's the head 184 feet and rpm 3500 weight of the pump and 
the internal number here. The vendor shall keep the following data available for at least 20 years. Material certificates such as mill test reports, test data results to verify the requirements of the specification have been made. If a specified details of the older repairs and the course of all heat treatment performed as part of the repair procedure, result of quality control test and inspection, as built running clearances, other data specified by the purchaser. Uh, pressure containing parts shall not be painted until the specified inspection and testing of the parts, such as hydro test and ND examination is complete. All preliminary running tests and mechanical checks shall be completed by the vendor before the purchaser's final inspection. Uh, visual inspection MTPT shall be performed after the final heat treatment in the proof rough machine condition. In the proof rough machine condition, an additional amount of material remains on areas where machining to critical dimension and tolerances is required. The additional amount of material removed shall not exceed one millimeter. Uh, 0.04 inch uh, material stock or 5% of minimum allowable wall thickness, whichever is less. RTUT of casting shall be performed after final heat treatment because the crack might grow during the heat treatment, which is intended for stress, stress relaxation. So it's done always after uh, post final heat treatment. NDE as per Section 5 and acceptance criteria as per Section 8, Division 1. Visual inspection acceptance criteria for casting as per MSS SP55. Um, only PMI techniques provided quantitative results shall be used. So because some PMI techniques uh, give only qualitative. So they just say what type of material it is without giving the percentage, the approximate percentage of the alloying elements. So it says uh, you have to use a quantitative, which also shows not only the, what type of material it is, but uh, the alloying elements composition also. Mill test reports, material uh, composition certificate, visual stamping or marking shall not be considered as a substitute for PMI testing. Also, PMI cannot uh, be substitute for mill test reports. So they are for different purposes. PMI is used to uh, ensure that the right material is used, and while mill test reports the certification with uh, more accurate information, and includes alloying composition and uh, material test reports, heat number, batch number, etc. And it's actually certifying that that's the right material. But PMI is just uh, confirms that that is the material. Um, PMI cannot differentiate between grades of carbon steel, so they, they cannot uh, they need to use for carbon steel normally. Uh, if specified at least six weeks before the first schedule running test, the vendor shall submit to the purchaser for his review and comment detail for CFO all running tests and all specified optional tests. It's always uh, six weeks on all the API standards, so they should say how the test they are going to do the test, the procedure, um, and the test procedure shall include the actual measurement uncertainty of all data used in the calculation of flow, head, and power, as well as all acceptance criteria. So it tells you what is the, uh, the guaranteed one, plus minus, uh, guaranteed performance, plus minus, and also tell you uh, the procedure, what they're expected to see during the test, the flow, the head, you know, the guaranteed head and flow, plus minus, and then what is the acceptance criteria there. Mechanical seals shall not be used during the hydrostatic test, but instead shall be used during all running or performance test. So mechanical seals, because uh, they are not designed for uh, test pressure, hydro test pressure, uh, there is a slave seal, they call it. Uh, they use it uh, just to uh, uh, pressure test it, hydro test the casing. Uh, so once that's done, uh, because that's like one and a half times, 1.3 times of a uh, maximum allowable working pressure, it might damage the seal. Um, the slave seal is removed and during the performance test, you can use the mechanical seal and it should be used because you want to see that actually the other, during the actual working condition, uh, the mechanical seal can perform and does not leak. 
The intent of the hydrostatic test of a centrifugal pump is to ensure that the design and construction of pump pressure containing components and joints are leak free from ambient condition to the maximum operate operation condition defined on the data sheet. All pressure casing components should be hydrostatically tested as assemblies. The test shall be conducted with a liquid at a minimum of one and a half times the maximum allowable working pressure for 30 minutes. So it's one and a half times 30 minutes of MAWP. If the part tester will operate at a temperature at which the strength of the material is below the strength of that material at the testing temperature, the hydrostatic test pressure will be multiplied by a factor obtained by dividing the allowable working stress for the material at the test temperature by that at the rated operating temperature. So practically, if you are testing at ambient temperature, say 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and actually the pump is uh, uh, normally working at say uh, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the strength of the material at 200 degrees Fahrenheit is less than when it is, uh, if it is at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, then the pressure test should be increased pro rata uh, by uh, uh, stress ratio, but lowest allowable stress ratio, which is uh, the allowable stress of that component at um, 50 divided by allowable stress of the component at 200 working pressure and uh, so it will be more than one so that is the pro rata you're using the factor the chloride content during hydro test of stainless steel not exceed 50 ppm this is frequently used on the field and you should remember it as a practical question the contract seals and bearings shall be used in the pump for performance test again we have reiterated this the performance test shall be performed using water at a temperature not exceeding 55 degree centigrade, 130 degree Fahrenheit. And the vendor shall take the performance test data, including head, flow rate, power, and vibration at a minimum of five points. So what measurements you do during the test? Head, flow rate, power, and vibration, and minimum is five points. These points shall normally be shutoff points. No vibration data required here. Minimum continuous stable flow, beginning of allowable operating region, between 95 to 99% of rated flow, between rated flow and 105%, and approximately the best efficiency flow if rated flow is not within 5% of this best efficiency flow rate. And then at the end of the allowable operating region. The test speed shall be between 3% of the rated flow shown on the pump data sheet. What they guaranteed, it should not be more than 3% plus minus test speed. Um, if, it is if it is necessary to dismantle a pump after the, perf uh, the performance test for the, for the sole purpose of machining impellers to meet the tolerances of differenti for differential head, no retest is required unless the reduction in impeller diameter exceeds 5%. So if you are exceeding the impeller diameter for any reason after the test, then you have to retest it. Otherwise, up to 5%, you don't have a problem. 3% drop in head shall be interpreted as indicating performance impairment. That's the terminology MPSH3. So net positive suction head 3 means uh, anything above uh, up to a three percent drop is allowed uh, so as you can see here three percent of the rated speed also it's all three percent um, otherwise it's called the performance imp impairment if that uh, you have a drop in here more than three percent so up to three percent is, is is accepted mpsh required test shall determine the actual mpsh required at a three percent head drop if specified by the client, the pump shall be mechanically run at a rated flow for four hours as an optional test. So this is the, the client pay uh, normally pays for it. That's not included in pump uh, price. If they want to make absolutely sure that the pump is, you know, get more assurances. So they ask the vendor to run it for four hours and say every 15 minutes, check the, uh, the vibration, the temperature, the pressure, etc. 
uh, and this is called mechanical running test and it's an expensive test because you have to you have to uh, connect the inlet and outlet and uh, create a fluid there so the test bench is uh, it's a expensive and uh, time consuming thing so uh, if the client wants to that to happen mm, to make absolutely sure that it's working at the site then they pay for it and they call it mechanical running test for our continuously at normally i think it's 105 percent of maximum allowable work equipment shall be prepared for domestic shipments suitable for outdoor storage for a period of at least six months so all the storages outdoor at least six months with no disassembly required before operation one copy of manufacturer's standard um, certified test curves and pumps within 15 days after testing shall include head power uh, recalculated to the proper specific gravity and efficiency plotted against flow rate now um, normally they do uh, with the water the test so the specific gravity of one but the actual fluid is going to be used outside this might be more or less than one so that adjust uh, should be adjusted uh, to include the actual head and power um, during the actual operating condition with the actual fluid. So the, this is a recalculation. Um, the vendor drawing and data record, BDD, are furnished by the vendor shall contain sufficient information so that together with the manual, the purchase and car properly install, operate, and maintain the equipment uh, covered by the purchase order. So all they need is, um, there's a lot of information in BDD, or it should it will be uh, between the purchaser or client and the vendor um, agreed what should go into VDDR but what API wants is that it should be enough to install, operate and maintain the equipment. Uh, so uh, these are important. Um, Annex E, um, inspector checklist versus three levels of inspection. Um, Annex G, uh, material class selection guide versus service and temperature range. Annex H, uh, material class and a specification for pump parts. Uh, material class for pump uh, H1, H2, H3, H4 uh, for piping, um, non-metallic uh, pump parts and uh, uh, the specification and the classes materials. Annex J shows determination of residual and balance and worksheet, polar chart and acceptance criteria is in table 19. And Annex L is informative, show list of typical vendor drawing VDDR requirement. So used as a guide and Annex M, example of test data summary. Annex N is shows pump data sheet. It's good to see all this. And data sheet is part of the purchase documents package and issued by the purchaser. Uh, data sheet provides a general reference to material of construction, material certification, and PMI requirements. Pump data sheet goes through three stages as issued for pump purchase, part of purchase order package submitted by the purchaser, accepted by um, supplier vendor, as sold. So you should understand what this term means, submitted by um, as one of the first documents listed on the B uh, STL, the supplier document list of VDDR eventually. Uh, data sheet is reviewed and approved for construction by purchaser and as built, submitted as final form test. Uh, so first they issue a purchase order uh, by uh, client and then uh, it finalized uh, uh, as per VDDR and then um, the the final VDDR when the pump is submitted uh, is, is delivered and the VDDR is finalized. Uh, pump data sheet should be reviewed and approved by purchaser acquisition engineer just for your information. 